native to Madagascar, but has been naturalized in Jamaica and throughout the rest of the world. Periwinkle is grown not just as an ornamental plant, but also as a medicinal plant. Welcome to Earth's Medicine. In today's video, we will be profiling the Jamaican periwinkle plant and looking at its medicinal properties and how it is used in traditional medicine. So the scientific name for periwinkle is Catharanthus roseus. It belongs to the Apocynaceae plant family and the genus is called Catharanthus. In Jamaica, we commonly refer to it as periwinkle, but in other parts of the world, it has other common names. For example, there is rosy periwinkle. There is also cape periwinkle and old maid. But the preferred common name is Madagascar periwinkle. So, um, periwinkle is an evergreen herbaceous plant. It is erect and it has branched stems that can become woody. It tends to grow between one to four feet tall. Um, the leaves are glossy green and the flowers have five petals and they can be pink, white, or purple and they have a purple eye in the center. The stems of the plant also produce a milky sap. In Jamaica, you can pretty much find periwinkle growing in people's backyards, front yards, um, along roadsides and in other green spaces. The flowers are pollinated by butterflies and other pollinators and it is usually propagated by seed or by cuttings. Um, periwinkle has a lot of medicinally active alkaloids and they have proved to have a huge effect on treating a variety of cancers that were once considered incurable. Now six of these alkaloids have been found to have anti-cancer properties and two of them that's vinblastine and vincristine have saved millions of people suffering from various forms of advanced cancers including kids affected by leukemia and other types of cancers. Now periwinkle also has other medicinal properties which includes purifying, detoxifying, antimicrobial and healing properties. It also has antiviral, anti-dysenteric, anti-hyperglycemic, anti-hypertensive, anti-fertility, um, and anti-inflammatory properties. It also has properties that can increase perspiration increase urination, promote vomiting, and the bowel movement, and it is also a vermifuge, meaning that it has properties that can destroy or expel worms. The dried root 
is a source of agmalicin, which is an alkaloid that can increase blood flow in the brain and other parts of the body. Before we go any further guys, I'm going to ask you please to hit that like button, drop a comment and share this video as well so that others can benefit from this information. If you're new here, a very warm welcome to you. If you would like to see more content like this one in the future, then please subscribe to the channel right now and turn that notification bell from red to gray so that you won't miss our next upload. Thank you so much guys. Now let's get right back to the video. So guys, the parts of the plant that are typically used in traditional medicine include the leaves, the stems, the flowers, and the roots. In Jamaica, it is traditional for some persons to use the plant to make tea and then they just drink this to help them to control diabetes and hypertension. This is also done in other parts of the world as well. Some people use a plant to help to treat various kinds of cancers for example breast cancer um, leukemia Hodgkin's disease malignant lymphomas Wilms tumor among other kinds of cancers some people also use the leaves of the plant to make tea and they take this internally to help to reduce anxiety and stress to promote sleep and to improve circulation of the blood people also use both the leaves and stems of the plant to make tea and they take this internally to help to treat a lot of different ailments for example memory loss and mental impairment that is caused from diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's disease. They also use it to promote alertness and to maintain cognitive performance, to treat headaches, irregular menstruation, to help to trim down plaque in the blood vessels, to prevent a stroke and to help persons recover from a stroke. Also to treat colds, coughs and the piles. This tea is also used externally to treat sore throats and um, they do this by using it as a gargle. People also use the plant externally to treat things like insect bites you know like wasp bites or mosquito bites also to treat insect stings wounds canker sores bleeding gums nosebleeds and various skin problems you know like eczema acne and dermatitis um, one way in which they use the plant to treat these things is to extract the leaf juice and apply it to the affected area another way in which they do it is to wash the leaves of the plant and while it is wet they pound it in a mortar and pestle and then um, apply the leaves to the affected area. 
for irritated eyes or inflamed eyes. The flowers are used to make tea. Then it is cooled and used to wash the eyes. Others use the flowers, stems and leaves to treat arthritis and edema and the bruised leaves to topically treat bleeding piles. In Bahamas, some people make a tea from the flowers and um, they take it for flatulence, asthma and tuberculosis. It is said that this tea may cause flushing and gastrointestinal issues and that you should not drink it if you suffer from constipation, low blood pressure, liver, kidney or lung disease, if you are pregnant or breastfeeding and before and after surgery it is also not recommended for you to drink more than four cups of this tea it is also said that all parts of the plant are toxic but symptoms are unlikely from small ingestions Medical Disclaimer The information shared on Earth's medicine is for the purpose of enlightenment. It is not to be used as a substitute for pharmaceutical medicine. If you are feeling ill or you have any health concerns, please speak to your doctor about same.